Time and Temp brought to you by Boniface Hires. Warranty forever. Thank you. All right, taking a look now at Ian, the 11 o'clock advisory is in. Winds are at 65 miles an hour, and the pressure continues to drop. The latest impacts all straight ahead. Hundreds of Osceola County residents spent the day picking up sandbags and stocking up on the necessities, but there's one thing some locals say they're struggling to find. I'm West 2's Megan Mulatto with the details coming up. Challenge to have is, is most of them are fearful because they know there's not many places to go. Protecting the homeless, how shelters are getting ready to take people in ahead of the storm. Local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us here on West 2 News. Tonight, all eyes are on Ian. The storm is growing in intensity and getting even stronger. In Central Florida, we are facing the threat of tornadoes, strong winds and flooding. Every Florida county right now is under a state of emergency and tropical storm watches are beginning to move north. We have team coverage on Ian's track and how our communities are getting ready. But first, we want to begin with our first warning weather team. Chief Meteorologist Tony Manolfi and first warning meteorologist Alex Delisi, they are here with the very latest. Tony, we were talking about that advisory just coming in. What is it saying? Well, a, a lot to break down here. You know, the hurricane hunters have been in there all night, Luana, and they're seeing that pressure coming down now, developing an inner core. So we think that the, the beginning of the rapid intensification is now underway, and that's depicted here over the next couple of days. In fact, Category 4 hurricane just to the south and west there of the Tampa Bay area. Notice by Wednesday, Cat 3, and then by Thursday as it lifts more towards the north than that fronts dropping out in the wind shear increases from the southwest and begins to weaken it but look at how close though this is scraping the western side of the florida peninsula and because of that close proximity all of us here in central florida are going to feel the impacts of e and it's just a matter of how much and that's what we're going to be fine-tuning now over the next couple of days as luana mentioned those watches and warnings tropical storm watches and warnings now uh, in and around the fort myers area over towards inglewood and we think that by uh, tomorrow morning's advisory this will go right through the tampa bay area and on north of there look at that inner core now Thunderstorms blossoming. First real significant banding now on the eastern side of this feature is beginning to take shape. Take a look at the latest, latest model guidance here. Most of the models are right through the center point of the cone. Now, again, there is some error here as we go out. Still a camp off towards the west and still that camp off towards the east. Hurricane Center going right up the middle there. And because of that, the threats are increasing for all of central Florida. That does include the risk of tornadoes, high winds, and flooding. That peak duration of significant weather we believe right now is going to be very late Tuesday night Wednesday morning right through Thursday and in fact when you take a look at our latest graph model which Alex is going to show you you can see why yeah hey Tony so that's right we take a look at our in-house future cast here and you can see it's lining up very close to the center here of the National Hurricanes official track notice those bands starting to whip up as the storm becomes stronger and stronger the eye also expanding out as it works its way across Cuba notice a little bit of a difference now from the track here at least from the center center of the cone. Again, remember the forecast cone here shows where the center could be. So it's still within the cone. Here's Tuesday night. Notice those bands now starting to work their way up into central Florida. As we go into Wednesday, notice these heavier rain bands continue to spin on up into central Florida. And again, because we are on the northeastern side of the storm, these rain bands as we go into Wednesday could contain tornadoes. So that's what we're going to be keeping a close eye on. Notice the eye of the storm continues to work its way slowly down towards the south of Tampa and then on in. So our in-house model starting to agree more and more with that track. As we go over the next few days, again, the storm prep timeline. Now is the time tomorrow. Get those storm preps underway. Start getting the stuff outside of your home indoors. Tie it down. As we go into Tuesday, those preps need to be done because as we go into Wednesday, that's when that stormy weather really begins to move in. Thursday also looking like those weather conditions will be deteriorating. And then by Friday, medium confidence that things will be clearing out. We have to wait and see of those impacts to know if it's safe to get outdoors and start checking out the damage. Again, you don't want to go outside immediately after that storm passes through. So what do we mean when you get those supplies ready? We'll have that food, water, batteries, flashlight, medications ready to go. Start clearing out the lanai tomorrow. Tie down those loose items. Lower that pool level just a little bit. Don't drain it, but lower it. And also be sure to check your fuel, fuel propane for cooking and fill up the car. Coming up, we're going to tip
take a look at some more of those models. We'll take a look at what we can expect wind-wise in just a few minutes. All right, Alex, thanks for the update. Speaking of storm preps, over in Osceola County, hundreds of residents spent the day today picking up sandbags at the Osceola Heritage Park location. It opened at 8 a.m. and closed their doors at 6 p.m. West 2's Megan Mulatto has been out there all day long speaking with the locals there. And Megan, you said that there's one item that they're struggling to find. What is that? Seminole County has several locations and opportunities to fill up sandbags. They include Red Bug Lake Park in Castleberry, the Boom Boomba Sports Complex in Sanford, and the Softball Complex in Altamont Springs. Empty bags and dirt will be available, but you must fill it up yourself and bring your own shovel. There is a limit of 15 bags per household. Seminole County Citizen Information Line will also open up tomorrow at 8 a.m. You can call that number on your screen, 407-665-0000, to get information on sandbag locations, shelter openings, and to get answers to other questions about the storm preps. Residents can also stay informed by texting STORM2022 to 888-777. Some homeless shelters in Orange County are ready to open up their doors for anyone in need if Ian does become a bit too dangerous. West News tonight, Governor Gettigas reports from Winter Garden with a closer look at how they're preparing. Bethune-Cookman's president is reminding everyone that classes are canceled tomorrow and that campus is going to be under an evacuation order. And this is for all students, faculty and staff on campus. With the uncertainty of Tropical Storm Ian, many are glad that the school is being proactive in keeping everyone safe. The classes will resume virtually on Tuesday. The school wants to remind students that smartphones can access or that their smartphones rather can access the necessary materials needed if you do not have a computer a computer that's available to you. Lake County School has announced an early release day on Tuesday. All students will follow a Wednesday schedule on that day so that they can get out an hour early. The district will close on Wednesday and Thursday as many of the schools are used as shelters for the storm. The district expects full operations will resume on Friday with classes. And coming up in our next half hour, how two other school districts are monitoring conditions and whether or not they're considering canceling their courses. Our team of first warning meteorologists is very busy tracking the latest on Ian round the clock. West 2 is your home for team coverage on the impacts that Ian could have on Central Florida, its path and intensity. And for breaking updates, make sure that you download our free West 2 News mobile app and stay up to date on West.com and on our other social media platforms. So to come right here on West 2 News, some important tips to help you get ready as Hurricane Ian approaches, or Tropical Storm Ian rather, and preparing for the worst, yet hoping for the best, how our coastal communities are getting ready. We'll be right back. Custom weather alerts on the West 2 app. Download it today. Welcome back tonight. Right now we are tracking Ian. Here's a look at the cone from the latest advisory. Our first warning weather team will be with us in just moments with the details on its track and intensity. But first, preparing for the worst, yet hoping for the best. Today, leaders out in Brevard County were working to make sure that people are ready for Ian as this tropical storm makes its way closer and closer to the state of Florida. West 2's Tony Atkins gave us an early morning glimpse into a county working to prepare. Well, for more information about sandbag locations near you, just head to our website at WESH.com. All right, we've got our first morning weather team here with us tonight. They're tracking the very latest. You're going to be talking about the winds. But first, Tony, let's talk about the latest weather advisory. So when we take a look at the cone, we're, we're seeing these tropical storm warnings and watches beginning to lift northward. Now, we're not surprised by that. We knew that was going to happen as Ian is making that turn to the northwest. And Alex, the other thing we saw from the hurricane is the big drop in the pressure here. Yeah, that's a pretty good indication that we are starting to see that rapid intensification beginning to start there, Tony. Yeah, there, there's that pressure now, 989 yeah. millibars as of the 11 o'clock advisory. Notice the direction now, northwest, and we think it'll go north-northwest uh, down the road and then uh, due north and could hug the western side of the Florida Peninsula. That, again, that'll be one of the things we watch. But uh, the first real banding of the evening now taking place as we're starting to see that inner core get going, and when that happens, that's when you get that rapid intensification. So we'll continue to monitor that overnight tonight. 
uh, Kellyanne and uh, uh, Eric will have the latest for you come daybreak tomorrow morning. But you can see tropical storm watches all the way up towards Inglewood in the Fort Myers area. Tropical storm warnings now down across the Florida Keys. That will continue to live northward. And wouldn't be surprised with the 5 a.m. advisory that the, they are pushed all the way up towards the Tampa Bay area, if not north. There's the front that we've been alluding to. That, as it drops south, is going to bring across a lot of wind shear in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico, then link up with Ian, and then we'll start to see some weakening by the time we get to Wednesday night and Thursday. Winds up towards Cuba tonight are beginning to pick on up on the northern side of this particular feature. We take a look at the wave action. Waves now at 12 feet, and that's going to be a concern because once that storm system moves into the southeastern Gulf, we're going to start seeing some surge issues already. You look at Miami, Southport, Everglades, and Naples, none being reported, but you give this another couple of days, and that's going to dramatically change as we see Ian now move off towards the north-northwest, increasing in intensity from a Cat 2 to a Cat 3. You can see Tuesday evening on into Wednesday, peaking at a Category 4, and then off the west coast there near Tampa, uh, near Cedar Key, still a major hurricane, weakening on approach, and then becoming a tropical storm as we get you into Friday late afternoon. Computer model trends today are pushing back towards the east. That's why the cone has been allowed to shift a little bit closer to the coast, and that's why you need to finish your preps. Get everything done as we go through the day Monday, Tuesday early on okay. Tuesday night we may see some of the effects, especially with the surge as the storm system lifts to the north. We could be seeing some angry seas. 25, 35 foot seas, maybe even higher than that. That's going to create a lot of surge potentially in and around the Tampa Bay area, not along the eastern side of the peninsula. So don't worry about that. The other caveat, though, is we've got a lot of issues with wind, rain, and that severe weather with more in the wind. Here's Alex. Yeah, so let's take a look at these comparisons here. Again, the European forecast here on your left, the GFS on the right. This is where we're going to be watching for these stronger winds to be moving very close to the shoreline. As we go towards uh, Tuesday, you notice uh, going across across Cuba. As we go into Wednesday afternoon, winds are starting to pick up the pace across central Florida with both models. And then as we go into Thursday, here's where there are some differences. Notice the European forecast has been consistently a little bit closer to the coast. You also see those reds, the 60 mile per hour winds there moving into Polk County, seeing tropical storm force winds again Thursday afternoon, moving over into Marion County and most of central Florida there. The GFS a little bit further offshore, keeping those core hurricane winds a little bit offshore as well. But as we go into Friday, still dealing with some uh, gusty winds on these forecasts as they work their way up towards the north. So bottom line, we do have to prepare for those strong gusty winds as we continue into the week. And also notice the chance of uh, tropical storm force winds now increasing as the storm gets closer and that track becomes more into focus. Notice most of central Florida now at least a 60% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. I expect that to grow even greater as we go into tomorrow again as this cone and continues to tighten up and as that forecast uh, uh, certainty becomes more of course certain. So when can we expect the likely arrival from this tropical storm force winds? Again, we're expecting it Wednesday evening, Wednesday morning already moving into southwestern Florida. So again, it's a good idea to get those preps done tomorrow. So by Tuesday, you can just tidy up those last things in the morning by the afternoon. Again, those winds are going to start to pick up the pace. And right now the impacts locally, we're continuing to watch that high risk for the flooding, severe storm Storm risk still medium that could be adjusted upwards as that track can gets in more into focus. Tropical storm wind gusts again medium risks now, but I do expect that to go up as we go into the day tomorrow. Storm surge watches just a side note there still getting uh, just been issued there for southwestern Florida. As we take a look at future cast for tomorrow again, if you need preps done, get it done early because by the afternoon we're tracking more showers and storms moving on in. Those will clear out by the night and then as we go into Tuesday, rain chances increase even further as we track the tropics Wednesday and Thursday, those will be first warning weather days again as Ian starts to move on in. Andrew Zach. Hey, Alex. Through the first two weeks of the NFL season, the Miami Dolphins have been a big surprise. They took on the Bills today. Could the Finns stay undefeated? We have those highlights for you next. Plus, the Bucks with their home opener today. The West 2 sports team was there. We will check in with our own Kendra Douglas. This. All right, y'all. West 2 first warning weather is tracking Ian. I'm meteorologist Kellyanne Class. Get the latest on the storm's projected path and strength starting tomorrow morning on West 2 News Sunrise.
West 2 first warning traffic. Helping you get from here to there with ease. Warning you of delays and giving you the best route. Watch Megan Mackey weekdays on West 2 News Sunrise. West 2 Sports is sponsored by Mullinax Ford, Florida's largest Ford retailer, where you always get your price up front and never pay a dealer fee. Now, West 2 Sports, sponsored by Mullinax Ford. Hello, everybody. I'm Zach Maskovich. It might be week three of the NFL season right now, but it was the home opener for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The first team the Tampa Bay faithful got to see at Raymond James Stadium, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. The Jacksonville Jaguars also big winners in L.A. today. They take down the Chargers 38 to 10 that final score. That's going to do it for your first look at sports. We have more coming up later in the show. But for now, we got to take a break. West 2 News continues after this. Watch West 2 News Sunrise for traffic updates driven by Toyota of Orlando and Toyota of Claremont. Local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. Welcome back tonight. We are tracking the latest on Ian. The storm is getting more organized and it's gaining intensity and strength tonight. More tropical storm watches have been issued and our team of first warning meteorologists have been monitoring its every move. Let's check in with first warning chief meteorologist Tony Manolfi. Tony, what is the latest track on this storm? So it, it's taken that turn now, Luana, to the northwest here at about 13 miles an hour. Pressure's been dropping steadily here and uh, will uh, drop rapidly and then intensify rapidly late tonight and during the next couple of days becoming a category four hurricane we do believe here either late tuesday night or on into wednesday notice now that the cone was just adjusted slightly more to the east taking that track very close to the tampa bay area by wednesday at eight o'clock as a major category three hurricane and then the weakening takes shape after that as that front is going to be going by to the north and east creating a sheared environment again wind is not a friend of tropical features and that should be begin to weaken it. Now, with the 11 o'clock advisory, as we mentioned, tropical storm warnings now across the Florida Keys. Tropical storm watches all the way up towards Fort Myers, Inglewood area, and storm surge watches are now up in anticipation of a major hurricane just offshore by 100 miles or less. We take a look now at the latest developments. You can see that uh, central dense overcast, the core there getting better and better organized, deeper thunderstorms right around the center. That's because it's over some incredibly warm water here in the northwestern Caribbean, and that's going to help to aid and develop and fuel this storm. Look at how tight the models are lined up here down across uh, uh, Cuba, but then they, they still fan out. We still have two camps, and this is the important note to make here, that a more of a shift to the east means more wind and a greater risk for flooding and severe threats. So again, we're going to be watching that. There still are a few models that are to the west of the center of this cone, but the bottom line, the threats are increasing for all of us here in central Florida. The risk for tornadoes, high winds, and flooding are all in play. The duration, late, late, late Tuesday night, Wednesday, and Thursday. We'll continue to watch that. Alex, you were showing the graph earlier and what it was doing but what about the gfs and the european computer models you know uh, something to note as we go into today a big difference here with these models yesterday you might have remembered there's quite the difference here the european model was well further out towards the east compared to the gfs which was more out towards the west staying in the gulf look at how they're stacked up right on top of each other very good agreement between the two uh, major uh, global models at the moment you can see by 4 30 wednesday again very good agreement. Both of them having it come out more towards the east, moving towards Tampa Bay as we go into Monday, as we go into Thursday, still dealing with effects. Here's 1030 in the morning on Friday. The storm slowly starting to weaken as it interacts with that front and works its way over towards the Big Bend. Compare that with our in-house model again. Notice again, it continues to increase in strength as we go into Tuesday, right over Cuba as we continue towards Tuesday night. Again, that's why Tony was saying get those preps done early Tuesday morning because by Tuesday night here's 11 o'clock starting to see those rain bands move in strongest of the wind still offshore but as we go into Wednesday heavier rain bands continue to work on in and again that is where we start to see that risk for tornadoes again the current track still brings it up as a category 4 hurricane as we go into Wednesday morning Wednesday night so again get those preps done early as we go over the next few days because or into the beginning of the week because by Wednesday and Thursday that worst of the weather is starting to move in coming up we'll take another look at those winds and especially how far out 
out from the middle of that storm. They can expand in just a couple minutes there, Luana. All right, Alex, good information. Well, right now, school districts throughout our local counties are watching Ian and assessing whether or not they need to cancel classes. Polk County Public Schools says that they are carefully monitoring this forecast. They say at this time they do not anticipate any impact on classes Monday or Tuesday. However, they do say it's possible that all after school activities will be canceled Tuesday night. Brevard County Public Schools also say that there are no changes to school schedules at this time and that the district leadership will continue meeting with experts at Brevard County Operations Center. And here's a few storm preparations that you may want to do right now. Check your homeowners or renters insurance policies. Policy changes cannot be made once a tropical storm or hurricane watch or warning has been issued for Florida. Also finish any tree trimming, yard work and repairs to the roof of your home. Also, if you use a generator, make sure it works properly and you know how to use it safely. Do not, I repeat, do not use one inside of your home or garage. Remember that they do emit carbon monoxide. FEMA suggests testing them at least 20 feet away from your home, far from any windows or vents. Also, make sure that you turn off your generator and let it cool off before refueling and do not use them in rain or wet conditions. And you may have noticed a small QR code on the bottom of your screen, the right-hand side of your screen. Anytime you see that, that on the screen, you can scan it with your smartphone, and it's going to link you to the very latest storm updates. And this is a code for our West 2 News Hurricane Survival Guide. Now's a good time to brush up on the basics, whether you're new to hurricane season or not. From the difference between what is a warning and a watch to pet safety plans, it is all inside of that guide. And as you are out storm prepping, Florida leaders want you to keep an eye out for any price gouging. We've put the Florida Consumer Hotline on your screen now. That report is to a report a scam, or that number is to report a scam or price gouging. You can call that number right there, 8669-NO-SCAM. Scams can include companies taking advantage of the situation to hike up prices of putting up shutters or boarding up your home. It can also be a store charging too much money for cases of water. You can also find that hurricane survival guide inside the West 2 News mobile app. Our team is committed to keeping you and your family informed and most importantly safe. We're going to send all the important updates that you need to know straight to your smartphone device. Still ahead on West 2 News, tracking Ian. We're taking a look at the latest models as we continue to watch the storm's path and intensity when we return. Welcome back. Right now, we are continuing to track Ian and the potential impacts it could bring here to Central Florida. Our first warning weather team has been busy monitoring this storm round the clock. Let's head on over now to our chief meteorologist, Tony Manolfi, with the details on Ian's track and intensity. Yeah, I, I tell you what, that intensity is uh, really starting to ramp on up. Winds at 65 miles an hour as of the 11 o'clock advisory. But in the center of the storm, right around that core now, uh, that is really beginning to solidify. And uh, when you start seeing that on the satellite loop there with the banding ongoing, you know that uh, things are about to crank up and crank up fairly quickly. And because of that, we now have tropical storm warnings across the Florida Keys and tropical storm watches as far north there. It's the Fort Myers area. And as we take a look at the, the front that's up to the north, you can see it cruising through Tennessee, North Georgia. That's going to drop off towards the east, southeast. And as it does so, and uh, Ian begins to lift more towards the north, there's going to be a lot of wind shear coming in from the west, southwest across the storm system. So as it intensifies into a category four and then continues to lift more towards the north, that wind shear will begin to weaken this feature down the road. Let me show you uh, the latest uh, uh, satellite imagery here, the IR, the infrared imagery. You can see sustained winds now. The Grand Cayman about 25, 30 miles an hour north of there. Look at this bath water, 88 to nearly 90 degree waters. That's why we're going to see that rapid in intensification now as we go through the next couple of days. We talked about the big push of wave action. Anytime you get a, a developing storm, a hurricane, you're going to see some incredible surf, and that's what's going to be building northward here. And uh, we're going to be watching uh, not only the Everglades in Miami, but up and down the western side of the Florida Peninsula, up towards the Big Bend as the storm system cranks on up and takes this track. Now, all of that water from the ocean
Ocean. The Gulf of Mexico is going to be forced towards the coastline there. And as the, uh, the winds pick up as we go towards Wednesday night and Thursday, that increased wind shear should begin to weaken this storm system. The model agreement tonight uh, is not too bad. I mean, there's still two camps, and the GFS that's just now come in is actually trending a little bit more towards the west of the center line. We talked about the European also a little bit west. Don't think we're going to be adjusting the cone too much, though, as we get you to very early uh, 5 a.m. Monday morning. Intensity forecasts still remain quite high, running at about Cat 3, Cat 4. That means there's a big-time wind concern. Yeah, and that's right, Tony. Let's take a look at those winds. And again, the thing I like to show with this uh, graphic here is also don't focus so much on the cone of uncertainty here because even though the center of the storm could be anywhere within the cone, those tropical storm force winds and hurricane force winds extend well outside away from the center of the storm. So you see as we go through Tuesday, uh, 1 o'clock in the morning into Wednesday, here's 1030 in the night on Wednesday. Notice those tropical storm force winds center forecasted to be here Tropical storm force winds already making their way all the way up towards Volusia County. Hurricane force winds making their way through Tampa, getting closer to Sumter County here. Again, if this forecast holds true by Thursday uh, afternoon, still dealing with tropical storm force winds across Marion and Sumter counties, our western communities. And then by 730 in the morning on Friday, even Friday morning, the winds are starting to die down, but northwestern Marion County could still be dealing with some of those tropical storm force wind gusts. So that's something we'll keep an eye on. The other thing to notice and to keep in mind is that we're going to be on the northeastern side of the storm. The northeastern side is always the worst part of the storm, the worst weather, the strongest of the winds, and also the most twisting action. As the storm continues to push forward, well, it's also spinning at the same time, and that northeastern side tends to have the highest tornado threat. Again, usually the EF0 to EF2 tornadoes, 65 to 135 mile per hour winds. They're typically short lived, but that is something that's going to be a major threat as we go over the next few days. Also, watching the rain comparison here, European forecast a little bit closer to shore, dumping more rains across Marion County and even down in Osceola and Brevard counties here. I don't want to minimize this. Three to five inches of rain would also be quite the soaking amount of showers. Tomorrow, if you still need to get some preps done, get them done a little bit earlier because as we go towards four o'clock in the afternoon, notice showers and storms start firing up, especially from I-4 down towards the south and the east. Those will fizzle on out, and by 6 o'clock, we'll start to get a break from the rain as the lingering showers start to fade away. And as we go overnight into your uh, Tuesday, or we start to see those showers beginning to return. Again, over the next seven days, Tuesday starting to get more rainy. Wednesday and Thursday is when that weather really starts to deteriorate as Ian starts to move on in. Hey, Zach. Hey there, Alex. Gus Malzahn and the UCF Knights celebrating after they take down Georgia Tech yesterday. But the Yellow Jackets loss came with some penalties. I'll tell you about that after the break. Plus, training camp for the Orlando Magic is right around the corner. They got some bad news today. I have those details for you after the break. You know her from Black Panther actress Letitia Wright is here next to Hall. Now, West 2 Sports, sponsored by Mullinax Ford. Hello, everybody. I'm Zach Maskovich. Saturday's game between Georgia Tech and UCF was reportedly Yellow Jackets head coach Jeff Collins' last game as the program's head coach. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says that Collins has been fired after going a combined 9-25 and in his three seasons in Atlanta. In NASCAR, Tyler Reddick, the winner at the Texas Motor Speedway earlier today. That's going to do it for your look at sports. Luana, take it away. All right, Zach, thanks for the update. Okay, all eyes are on Ian tonight. Tony, when do you think this is going to become a hurricane? Uh, I think it'll be a hurricane by 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So as folks are waking up and checking in with us tomorrow morning, I think we'll have a Category 1 hurricane. And then from there, it'll continue to develop and become a major hurricane over the next couple of days. You can see now the winds at 65 miles an hour. Pressure is at 989 millibars and is now moving off to the north and west at 13 miles an hour. There's the long track cone. Again, just a little bit of an adjustment back towards the east. But I got to tell you, both Alex and I have seen a little bit of a nudge back towards the west. Any nudge to the west where we can keep those hurricane core winds offshore longer is going to help us on out. So we'll continue to monitor those trends. We still have a couple days to do that. As it moves into the northeastern Gulf of Mexico, notice what's going on. It starts to weaken. Remember, that cold front's going by to the north. Upper level wind shear is going to uh, try to beat down Ian and weaken it as it approaches the, uh, the northeastern coastline there of uh, our west coast of Florida. So that's one of the things we'll have to watch at any rate.
with a track that's that close, 50 miles offshore, 100 miles offshore, we are going to have impacts all across central Florida. In fact, as we take a look now at those tropical advisories, they are beginning to uh, lift northward. Tropical storm warnings across the Keys. Uh, from there, we have tropical storm watches now just past Fort Myers. By daybreak tomorrow morning with a 5 a.m. advisory, we will more than likely see those uh, tropical storm watches for the west coast. And on top of that, Luana, look at that. We have tropical a, a storm surge advisory is now from Fort Myers down towards the Florida Keys. All right, and of course, you guys, no matter what happens, our team is going to be bringing you guys live coverage. We're going to be ha all hands on deck over the next few days, so stay with West 2 News, and don't forget... Oh, did you have something? Yeah, I think we still have some time left oh. in the show here. Uh, so, Tony, I mean, I, we, we're talking about these preps and what we need to be doing uh, starting to go forward. So now that the forecast is starting to get a little bit more in focus, I do want to, uh, uh, of course, continue to yeah. hammer on, you know, now is the time to start getting the stuff done. We are going to have some showers and storms tomorrow afternoon, but what are those preps? You know, we got to start getting the, uh, make sure the generators are fueled up, make sure you got the gas in the car, fuel, you know, food. Um, do you know any other tips to, to give out to people? Well, you know, you, you talked about, you know, taking those uh, milk jugs and yeah. freezing them. I, I, I'm a digital guy. I like to have all my documents on a thumb drive. So that's a big help. So not to uh, scurry around the house looking for this, that, and the other. But right. again, that window of opportunity to get ready is shrinking. So that's yeah. why we put that timeline out there. So get them done now. We yeah. know everybody's trying to get those sandbags filled up. We right. have all those locations. So you guys, if you go to our website, wesh.com, you're going to see right there. We have storm prep uh, preparations for you. Everything that you need to know, we also have a guide on there that will separate what is a warning and what is a watch, what to do with your pets, and, and the best saf safety tips for that. And I know, Alex, you've been doing uh, a lot of... Uh, Preparation, hurricane right. prep <laughs> tips, and all those packages that you've put together for yep. us. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know Seminole County has those uh, um, those enhanced shelters, so I'm sure that information will start coming out soon as well as the, again the track starts to get into more focus of where to go if you do need that uh, enhanced shelter, if you do need uh, those medical devices, you can't lose power with those medical devices. So I'm sure we'll be uh, talking more about that as well. When I was doing my uh, Facebook Live tonight, uh, a lot of uh, the input was, are you guys going to run your ticker for school closings, whether it's collegiate, oh, yeah. whether it's high school? We are absolutely going to have that covered on our ticker. So. Uh, you know, we may begin that sometime tomorrow, sometime Tuesday. For sure, though, uh, the, the roughest of the weather is going to be uh, marching on in Tuesday night, Wednesday, and Thursday. I know uh, Alan Harris over at Seminole County Emergency Management, he says, you know, they're going to close schools early so they can set up those shelters. So yeah. even though the weather might be perfectly fine tomorrow or Tuesday, uh, your kids might not be able to go to school because they need to have that extra time to actually right. set up those cots. Good point. And stuff. Yeah. yeah, they are on top of it. All right, mm -hmm. you guys, remember to keep it right here on West 2 News. We have all the team coverage that you need. And, of course, we're going to get started bright and early tomorrow on West 2 Sunrise. We are starting 30 minutes earlier as we track this tropical storm by tomorrow morning. As we heard from Tony, it is expected to become a hurricane. Mm -hmm. So you guys be prepared. Get ready right now. That's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For the very latest, go to West and make sure that you download that West 2 News free mobile app. Have a wonderful and blessed night. We'll see you later. The reason why we go on TV is to give that first warning. We want to give heads up. Uh, first warning here, Claremont. There is no better feeling in the world hearing people say, hey, Tony, I'm tuning into you. I trust you. And that doesn't come in a week. It doesn't come in a, a year. It comes over years of building that rapport with the community. And to me, that's pretty important. That's why it's a privilege to put your forecast in focus. I'm your chief meteorologist, Tony Manal. Meteorologist Kellyanne Class on West 2 News Sunrise.